Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Let's take a quick look at our evolutionary family tree. Now, if we were to take a look today, we know that we have orangutans, gorillas, bonobos, chimpanzees, and humans, us. And if we were to follow back the bonobos, chimpanzees and humans, all the way back, what we find that at around about 7 million years, we humans had a common ancestor with chimps and bonobos. We split off from this common ancestor and we now are looking at the hominins from Cylanthropus, Ororin, Artipithecus, all the way to Homo sapiens. Between that 7 million years to 5 million years ago, we had also known as the Miocene, we had Cylanthropus, Artipithecus and Ororin, and they were bipedal hominins. That means they walked on two legs. How do we know this? Well, Cylanthropus and Artipithecus, we have skulls for, and what this skull shows us is that the hole in which the spinal cord moves into the skull through is located directly at the bottom of the skull. This is called the foramen magnum. Now, this is an indication that the spinal cord was vertical an indication of bipedalism. For animals that walk on all fours, the foramen magnum is not directly underneath the skull. Now that's for Cylanthropus and Artipithecus. For Ororin, we only have a femur, but we can see by that femur that the most proximal portion of that femur is very similar to ours. Again, another indication of bipedalism. By the time we hit around about 4 million years ago, we have the genus Australopithecus. There's a couple of different subcategories of these. The most Probably the most common that you've heard of include Afarensis and Africanus, but there's also Anamensis uh, and the robust Australopithecus. Now, Australopithecus were quite small, around about 40 kilos. They had a very small brain size, and we know this because it's very similar, around about half a litre, or I should say around about 500 cc's and less, which is quite similar to the gor gorillas and chimpanzees. But what we found was the teeth began to change, and the teeth were an indication, specifically the canines, became less sharp and less pronounced, and this was an indication that Australopithecus was eating predominantly or solely a plant-based diet, very hard, very nutritionally poor plant-based diet, which required a lot of chewing. Now, the robust Australopithecus actually took this to the extreme, and you'll see that their teeth are quite large and that the jaw muscles are quite large too. Australopithecus, the robust Australopithecus actually lived well and truly up until around about 2 million years ago. Now, if we follow Australopithecus to around about 2.5 million years ago, this is when Homo habilis or the genus Homo came onto the scene. Now, we're still sitting in Africa here. Homo habilis, what we'll find, the teeth began to change from Australopithecus, and it was an indication, specifically the molars started to change, that we're now moving to a meat-based diet. So we also had plants, but we're moving away from plant only, and now we're going to meat. And it was an indication as well that we started to use tools. Now, Homo habilis had a brain size around about the same as Australopithecus, less than 500 cc's, but the teeth had changed. It's still bipedal. All of these hominins are bipedal, all right? But we're showing that we started to use tools. Now, at around about 1.72 million years ago, Homo erectus came onto the scene. And Homo erectus in Africa started to also use tools, but then started to spread out from Africa across Eurasia. And its brain size started to change. This is now when we're starting to get brain sizes closer to ours at around about 1200 to 1300 cc's. Now, Homo erectus spread out of Africa through to Eurasia. And what we have is that the Homo erectus that lived in Africa gave rise to Homo heidelbergensis. And Homo heidelbergensis at around about 1.7 odd million years ago also spread out of Africa into Eurasia. Now, in the areas outside of Africa, Homo heidelbergensis seemed to give rise to Homo neanderthalis, or Neanderthals, and the Denisophans. So the Neanderthals and the Denisophans came from Homo heidelbergensis outside of Africa. But inside of Africa, for the Homo heidelbergensis that remained, that's where us Homo sapiens arose at around about 200,000 years ago. Now the Neanderthals and the Denisophans seem to at least come about about 250,000 years ago outside of Africa. But what we find is that 
the current Homo sapiens, even though Homo heidelbergensis had a body very similar to ours, okay? So did the Denisovans, so did the Neanderthals, and we actually interbred with both the Denisovans and the Neanderthals. And for some reason, which we don't know yet, we outcompeted them or we killed them all off. But we do know that some human populations have significantly higher proportions of genetic material from the Denisovans or from the Neanderthals, depending where they are from. Okay, so it's not as if they've disappeared. They've actually been incorporated into the human species of Homo sapiens. Maybe not a huge amount, but some proportion of our genetic material has come from Denisovans or Neanderthals. So this is a quick family tree of our human evolution.